Welcome to Let Love, a podcast with the Sisters of Life. We invite you to join us for conversation, looking at life through the lens of love. You are loved, you are made in God's image, and your life matters. Let's talk about it. Hello, hello, and welcome again to Let Love Podcast. We are so thrilled to be with you. This is Sister on Your Stay. Sister Marie Veritas. And it's a new day, sister. It's a new day. It's glorious. New episode. New episode. Can't what believe it. What are we going to talk about? Well, you know, this episode, um, Let Love Draw You. Ooh. Yeah. Hmm. It's kind of fun. Compelling. It's very compelling. I was thinking a lot about, you know, what it is to be drawn. Hmm. Yeah. You know, as soon as you say that, you know what I'm drawn most by? <laughs> what? <laughs> The smell of coffee brewing mm. in the morning, it's, it's, it's powerful. Yes. It's a powerful draw. It's an instant um, indication of, of the good that is to come. <laughs> <laughs> There's something, there is something about smells yes. that are very nice. It's powerful. Baking bread. Ooh, fresh baked bread. Fresh baked bread. Brings you right into the kitchen. Oh, uh, bacon. You like bacon. I love the smell of <laughs> bacon. <laughs> True. It's really good. Well, what about sounds? Are we drawn? Are you drawn by any sounds? Oh, yes. I love the sound of, of like, laughter. Wow. It's just wonderful. Mm. Immediately you want to go there where the laughter is. You know what I love in the convent is the sound, like, the the unique jingle of my sister's rosary beads. Yes. <laughs> I, I know that's a unique experience, but um, when you've lived so long with your sisters that you actually know based on their their footsteps and their rosary jingle who it is yeah um, and that that delights my heart it's uh, amazing to my to know my <laughs> sisters in that way um yeah it's like the sounds the sights like drawn to like beauty beauty wow yeah what's like, your what's your favorite what draws you most in the natural world oh so many things you know just the mountain cap Sorry, mountain capped. <laughs> snow capped mountain tops. Snow capped mountain tops. You know. How the, beautiful. With silently falling snow. It's like, mm. it's just, you're just drawn to just be there. Mm. You know? It's powerful. Yeah. What about you? You know, I really love still lakes mm. uh, surrounded by fall foliage. Mm. Um, the beauty of that, the calm of that. Mm. Crescent moons. Mm. Um, especially in early spring when you get that um it's a blue i don't even know if i can describe it but it's it's sharp and vibrant and yet at the same time um heralds heralds the evening right mm. and the and you can see that crescent moon gleaming and the stars beginning to emerge from the sky uh that draws me like nothing else yeah uh, yeah it's a taste of heaven i think yeah yeah, it's very distinct being drawn. Yeah. Uh, it's an invitation. It really is. Uh, I mean, even nature is drawn. You know, mm. you think of like the migration of, you know, Canada geese or turtles. Like they <laughs> they are drawn to their place of origin. It's so Every cool. Every year. It's amazing. You so know? they have an interior compass. Interior compass. They know where home is. Yeah, and they can't, like they, they won't resist it. They can't. It's like they are drawn there to that place. You know, and even like plants. Like they're drawn to the light they actually turn to the light it's called in science it's called phototaxis so cool it's amazing like sunflowers like sunflowers actually turn they follow the, the sun yeah throughout the day yeah it's, it's amazing it's stunning it is they have this interior or i don't know what mechanisms it is on the inside i forget i once knew <laughs> <laughs> well and i think there's probably and then we'll flesh it out there's a parallel for us yes um, we have an interior compass for home base. Mm -hmm. And as we um, hasten towards that invitation, mm -hmm. follow it, follow that lead, allow ourselves to be drawn, mm -hmm. um, we find ourselves home. Yeah. Um, the same way the turtles and the yes. Canadian geese do. Yes, it's wonderful. You know what else I really am drawn by? What? Just one more thing. The sound of my name. Wow. When yes. someone speaks my name. Mm -hmm. um, with sincerity and intention. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, and there's something to that, uh, but mm -hmm. powerful. Mm -hmm. Very, very, and personal. Personal. And it's almost like, <gasps> yeah, 
I'm known. I feel like we're talking about something powerful. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should pray, kick it off with a prayer. Amen. Sounds good. Do you want to lead us? Here we go. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we entrust our hearts to you. We entrust our minds and our souls. Uh, we ask for the grace to let all our faculties, um, the whole of our lives, be drawn by your love. Be drawn home to your heart. Uh, be drawn by your truth and your goodness and your beauty which you have um, filled this earth with, filled our lives with uh, super abundantly. We ask for eyes to see you um, and to heed your invitation in every level and layer of our lives and throughout this day. And we just entrust ourselves uh, to your Immaculate Heart, Blessed Mother, and your care. As we say, Hail Mary, full of, of grace, grace, the, the Lord, Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed art thou among, among women, women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Grace, pray for us. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Wow. So letting love draw you. Yeah. So what is like? What does that mean? Can you like? I don't know. Give <laughs> us an image or like. Mm. I don't know. Um. Okay. Stick with me, and, okay. and I think it, it, uh, it's going to give us a gate. Okay. So when I was thinking about, okay, letting love draw me, I was thinking about um, the heroic age of exploration. Okay, this is at the mm. end of the 19th century, and Ernest Shackleton, I don't mm. know if you've ever heard about this guy. Yes, legendary. Legendary. Yes. Okay, so he uh, was kind of peaking as an explorer during the time of the Arctic exploration. So it had not yet been kind of quote unquote conquered. And so Ernest Shackleton, um, he had some you know, previous expeditions that kind of put him in a spot to pursue this. So he put an ad in, news in the newspaper. <laughs> um, and I'm going to read it to you. It's my favorite. And it's, it's a bit of a, a myth and a legend. So some people believe that the paper, the ad was there and some, uh, I don't know, say otherwise. But uh, the story goes like this. He put an ad in the paper and it said, um, men wanted for hazardous journey, small wages, bitter cold, long months of complete darkness, constant danger, safe return doubtful, honor and recognition in case of success. <laughs> now, um, do you want to guess how many men responded to this? Mm, hundred? Thousands. Wow. Thousands of men responded. Ernest would, only took 27 on his crew, along with a, a team of sled dogs, and off they sailed. Um, unfortunately, everything went wrong, oh. and um, they put themselves in the position, uh, rather than to conquer the Arctic, to pull off the greatest survival story of all time. <laughs> <laughs> so they basically drifted on um, ice for 21 months, barbaric conditions, wow. and yet early on, Months. 21 months. 21 months. Oh my gosh. In the Arctic. Antarctic. Terrible. Terrible. Antarctic. Thank you. He made a decision early on. He said, we are all going to survive. That was his bottom line. Every man is going to make it through. And so he designed everything towards this. He put the men on a schedule. They had time for chores uh, so that they wouldn't go crazy or idle. <laughs> um, at nighttime, they'd all sit in the bow of this ship which was being crushed by ice um, and they sang they ran plays there was culture uh, there was camaraderie um, I mean terrible conditions but they buffered all of this and Ernest Shackleton wouldn't you know 27 men were chosen and 27 men made it through Wow! Um, even today they've tried to pull off this same route mm -hmm. uh, with modern equipment they can't do it oh like they, they should not have survived this but two things that I pull from this. Mm -hmm. First of all, you know, conquering Antarctica, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, thousands of guys showed up for this, for glory, mm -hmm. for some small token of honor and recognition. Um, and I was trying to think of like, where's that frontier today, mm -hmm. right? If, if so much effort is worth um, 
you know, risking your life mm -hmm. um, to con conquer Antarctica. And I think it's the interior life. That's wow. the last frontier we're talking about. What's going on inside of us, mm. right? And if we tapped in, are we guiding? Are we seeking to explore mm. the, the galaxies that God has inscribed within us first? Second, the reality that Ernest Shackleton was drawn and drew his men mm. into this great epic towards this bottom line of survival. And in a sense, in the Christian life, mm -hmm. if I do the same, but my bottom line is love, what's that going to reveal? Um, what greatness is that going to open mm -hmm. and give mm -hmm. and expand for the whole world? Um, so the power of what we allow ourselves to be drawn by mm -hmm. and um, a little bit of a, an insight that we might have to go inside uh, and to, to captain our ship well to sail towards our point of origin, which is communion, mm. which is God, which is truth and beauty and goodness. Wow. I love that, sister. What a powerful image. Yeah. Just letting ourselves be drawn by love um, to the to really the, the point, the center of our existence, why we're here. Mm -hmm. But letting that be the one thing that draws us in everything that we do. Yeah. And and uh, and like like Shackleton. Like Shackleton. Like Shackleton, you know? And it's like, you know, often we can settle for mediocrity. But actually, it's like we have a greater frontier, like you're saying, in our hearts. Amen. Um, than anything this world can offer, you know? And what, what will happen? What will what, happen? What adventure, you Amen. know? If we, uh, if we grow in freedom to be able to actually let love, God himself, draw us, you know? Do we dare? The possibilities. I know. It's <laughs> wild. Well, and I guess... Um, how do, we, how do we do this? How do we begin to? And what do we have to tune into mm. this invitation? Um, well, it, it kind of seems, and this is a great image, <laughs> of kind of, if you kind of think of your whole inside world, it's like an interior symphony, ah. you know? Um, and it's kind of like getting everything playing in sync uh, and in harmony towards our eternal goal. You know, we, like we were saying God, mm -hmm. you know, truth, communion, goodness, beauty. And... Um, just the image of like the sections, you know, sections in an orchestra, the yes. vital players, yes. you know, one, just to list them, emotions, emotions. our emotions, mm. letting our emotions be drawn by love, mm -hmm. our thoughts, mm. letting our thoughts be drawn. These are key players. Key players, will, letting our will be drawn, mm. you know, and then also just um, our experience of understanding our, our spiritual experience, you know, uh, who are we being drawn by in any moment? Excellent. You know, the Lord or the enemy. Amen. You know, and those are kind of all things that kind of need to work together and, and to be drawn um, to that one single point of love. You love know? it. Yeah. So just, just some thoughts. Just naming them. Yeah. Just naming them. But I don't know if you have um, thoughts on that. Well, I would love, let's have, I mean, again, I, I imagine we can't be too comprehensive, but I would love to mm -hmm. tap into each of those just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like in a sense, okay, my emotions our emotions, <laughs> your emotions. We all have them. We all have them. <laughs> and, um, okay, let's break it down. Aquinas says emotions, in a sense, are, are morally neutral, mm -hmm. but they need to be guided by reason. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, sometimes I think uh, there can be this myth out there, like, okay, if I'm angry, if I feel the fullness, full vent of my anger, then it will find resolution. In truth, Yes, we need to feel our emotions, and there's a virtue to that, but that, um, that emotion needs to be guided by reason. Mm -hmm. um, it may seem a, a, a trite uh, way to, to treat it, but um, in a sense, our emotions need to be parented. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, you've got to, hey, sadness, come here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, okay, you're feeling sad. Mm -hmm. uh, being real with the fact that you're sad, and, but guiding that that experience with reason, mm -hmm. um, feeling that in proportion to and in degree to the way it should be felt, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and in that way, not getting depressed, right? When that's when mm -hmm. you become your sadness or not f living in regret because I just blasted somebody uh, with my anger. Mm -hmm. um, makes sense, right? Yeah. Something, yeah. In, be something in between. Yeah. And it, it's kind of like we, we all know like, 
you know, we don't want to have the adult temper tantrum inside. You know, like we've all been in the grocery store and seen the kid melt down in the aisle. <laughs> it's just complete, you know, God bless them. But it's, but we can, how, how often do we do that in our own hearts, you know? Absolutely. And it's like, it's just the thought like, wow, it doesn't have to be that way. Mm -hmm. I don't need to have an adult temper tantrum in the middle of, you know, Freshco or whatever grocery store you go to. <laughs> like, it's like, and it, the mm -hmm. freedom in that, there's a freedom and letting, it's almost like letting love order us, draw mm -hmm. us. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. I have a choice how I'm going to respond to this emotion. I'm feeling, I may be feeling it, mm -hmm. but I'm going to choose what I do with it. Mm -hmm. And guide it. And guide it. Reign yeah. as a gentle queen. Yeah. Reign as a good king. Yeah. Over your world of emotions. Yeah. And yeah. it's possible. It's possible. And virtue helps us. Yeah. It's always an option. It's always an option. <laughs> <laughs> really I, helpful. I have to remind myself of that. Um, so emotions. Emotions. And I think with the dominant, we have joy, sorrow, anger, shame. Fear. Fear. You know. So those are probably some of the, the, the big players mm -hmm. in our emotional world. Mm -hmm. um, and just good to be aware. Yeah. Take note. And that love can have dominion, or it has dominion over emotions, mm. and can instruct and guide. And guide. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And the good gift of our reason. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Okay. Emotional world. Thoughts. Yes. Th ah, thoughts. We're just doing it. We're skipping stones over the surface here. <laughs> I know. Um, there's, there's whole books on this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're just tapping in. Yes. Thoughts. You know, it was funny. The moment that I realized I was supposed to store those things. Um, I, yeah. I think it's easy to forget mm -hmm. uh, that that is a place we need to mm -hmm. be conducting, mm -hmm. um, stewarding, mm -hmm. guiding, responsible. We're responsible for our thoughts. Yeah. And that's, that's news, I think, to, I mean, I think it was news to me when I found out too. Yeah. yeah. But it's actually true. It's true. And it sets us free. Yeah. Um, something that I know in the world of thoughts that can be, be helpful to me is, um, especially when I'm like, gosh, why am I feeling persecuted in my own world? Mm -hmm. um, is uh, naming them in some regard. So I like to call, there's categories of thoughts, right? You can be ruminating on a hamster wheel, <laughs> right? <laughs> and when I'm ruminating on a hamster wheel, the same thought over and over and over and over again, mm -hmm. um, what can I do with that? Mm -hmm. You know what? I can stop, write it down, mm -hmm. And in that way, find perspective. I can, um, in a sense, stop the tape mm -hmm. um, and play something else. Mm -hmm. And I can act in that way. Mm -hmm. Another uh, thought pattern I like naming um, is uh, the boa constrictor. Ah, that's very yeah. familiar. <laughs> <laughs> when you start <laughs> wrapping your thoughts around yes. this one thought tighter yes. and tighter and tighter and tighter whether that's judgment or yeah. um you know other other worry ooh, or worry fear fear or precisely self-criticism yeah whatever whatever yeah and it it actually squeezes the life out of you yeah um, it's like a black hole yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah and it that focus that hyper focus on that one thing draws me away from kind of being able to reign as a gentle queen over yeah. the field of my thought. Yeah. And it has effects too, like crushes your ribs and all those. I mean, <laughs> it's just the image of being stuck in a snake, but it's serious. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So good to be aware. Yeah. And in a sense to, um, to, to grow in the freedom to pull back, mm -hmm. gain perspective. Mm -hmm. Again, stop the tape. Mm -hmm. um, look up to God. Um, another... Uh, I don't know, the sisters joke about this one. Um, it's like, they call it the mad woman upstairs. A lot of spiritual books will talk about this, or commentary man. Um, there's, yeah. this, there's this <laughs> voice that loves commenting on your life, and it's not for good. No. Um, and however you choose to do it, just <laughs> <laughs> rejecting, <laughs> silencing him. Right. Um, confronting that and saying, naming you know what, that's, that's the spirit of this, or that's a, mm -hmm. that's a thought pattern that is not helping me. Mm -hmm. That's not helpful, mm -hmm. as the Sisters of Life often like to say. Not helpful. It's just not helpful. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's not how I think. That's not how Jesus speaks to me. Amen. It's like, yeah, naming that voice, like, aha, 
It's the man upstairs. <laughs> you know. Throw him out the window. You're right. That's <laughs> <laughs> this is a imaginary. Amen. But, yeah. So, again, some fun examples, but just that we're aware of our thoughts. Yeah. We're seeking to be responsible for them, yeah. store them in the right direction, and learning interior ways to, to guide them. Mm-hmm. Um, and because thoughts have consequences, you know, mm-hmm. like every action is preceded by a thought. Mm. generally so Mm -hmm. you know and it's like they everything we're thinking it's like the interior soundtrack of of our life in a way and it's going to form how we see things it's going to form how we react to things what we do Mm -hmm. you know and if it's if it's like you're saying like criticism judgment worry whatever it's gonna like blur the lens of of our life you Mm -hmm. know um and so it's like how to let those thoughts be drawn by by him by, by jesus by light by love truth yeah mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. it's really yeah it's something it's a great adventure you know and it's like you think of like i, I don't know if you went camping or when you were little absolutely but you turn like the light on at night and what comes to the light is all the moths <laughs> you know <laughs> and they get zapped <laughs> <laughs> if it's a, you know fiery kind of light but it's kind of like that like turn the light on those thoughts and let all the moths come and be zapped by the light of jesus i don't that's a very i'm, I'm stretching the analogy i know no, but <laughs> listen I, I think it'll appeal to some so, for sure, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, so thoughts yes so thoughts we're, we're being good stewards there yeah our will yes yes You know, it's uh, what we perceive as good, we're going to choose towards that, right? Nobody chooses, I forget, some saint said this, but like, you're not going to choose something bad for bad. It's like, there's always some reason we see something as good that we're going to choose it, you Mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Um, When I think too, when I think of the will, it's, um, you know, you want to pull up a definition of freedom, mm -hmm. right? That freedom is not doing um, what I want. It's mm-hmm. not free license. It's doing what I ought. Mm-hmm. That I've been made um, to love, to be loved. And so choosing for love mm-hmm. at every turn. Um, and it might seem like exercise, and it is, but it's ultimately the, the conditioning that mm-hmm. will allow us to be t- truly mm-hmm. free within mm-hmm. ourselves. Um, free to love and be loved, mm-hmm. which is what we actually want Mm -hmm. um yeah it's a freedom for excellence you know it's like the people in our the people in our world who do we applaud the most in our Mm -hmm. in our culture you know it's the olympic athletes Mm -hmm. it's the um amazing musicians it's the fabulous actors you know Mm -hmm. and all these people have have disciplined themselves to excel at their craft Mm -hmm. um and it was a what and that that freedom it was a constant turning and choosing. No, I'm going to give up this thing so I can do this. I'm going to wake at four, four in the morning so I can p- train for this race. You know, it's this constant choice for excellence. What a beautiful and analogy. Free. Yeah. But this is an excellence in all of life. Mm-hmm. It's true. It's powerful, sister. It's true. Wow. I love thinking of it of that way. Yeah. Um, conditioning our wills. Yeah. Towards a thorough excellence. Yeah. And a, and a and beauty. Yeah. You know, when you watch someone dive, an Olympic athlete dive and do all the flips and turns and land in that water with the tiniest little splash, it's stunning. Mm-hmm. It's truly beautiful. Same it way is. when you look at the life of a saint. Mm-hmm. The beauty in which they transcended obstacles and trials mm-hmm. and brought love through so much. But that, I think you speak um, so essentially in like mm-hmm. acknowledging it takes choosing for it. Mm-hmm. Often you're you are overcoming and sacrificing. Mm-hmm. Um, you're overcoming yourself towards that goal. And there's a cost. Yeah. Um, and yet one that's worth it. Yeah. Mm. Amen. Powerful. Amen. So we're just tapping into different departments. <laughs> it's, here. it's amazing. So that's the what. What about our sense of identity? Yeah. Which. Again, I remember when someone said it to me, I'm like, what do you mean my sense of identity? Mm -hmm. Um, And then they started kind of walking me through it. It was was such a powerful moment of grace for me in that, where am I living from? Mm. So if I have a default, a homepage, right? A Mm -hmm. default browser inside, um, where is that? 
is it, am I defining myself? To, does my sense of identity flow from my weaknesses, mm -hmm. my failures, or conversely, my successes, um, what I do well? Mm -hmm. um, it's not enough. Rather, our sense of identity flows from the heart, mm. right? This, this hidden place in which we live. The mm -hmm. Catechism is a gorgeous, gorgeous paragraph, um, 2563, saying that the heart is the dwelling place where I am, where I live. Um, the heart is the place to which I withdraw. Mm. It says the heart is our hidden center, and only the Spirit of God can fathom the human heart and know it fully. This is where I live with God. Mm. The heart is our place of decision, place of truth, where we choose life or death, and it's our place of encounter. Because as image of God, we live mm. in relation. Wow. It's our place of covenant. Mm. I mean, when I think about living from this place, I mean, fields open up. Um, mm -hmm. Landscapes interiorly open up in mm -hmm. the sense of here I know I'm beloved of God. Mm -hmm. I know that I belong to Him. Mm -hmm. And in this setting, now I can become yeah. who I am most truly and essentially. Mm -hmm. um, from that, um, living from that as my place of identity. Mm. And letting yourselves be drawn to that place and let Him speak to us. Amen. There who we are because he's waiting there for us mm -hmm. he's waiting there mm -hmm. i love that sister that's so powerful it's mm -hmm. such a beautiful image mm -hmm. yeah the, the heart living from the inside out mm -hmm. love it our well, baptism whoa because we do we have baptized human hearts yeah that changes things it changes things that's a, like a whole other episode that's but another, <laughs> that, is a, that is another episode that's so good so our sense of identity but then you mentioned, sister, um, the reality of, of the spiritual world yeah, and the different movements spiritually that we can experience on the inside. Yeah, it's so real. Um, and actually, the, the saint who kind of like pioneered the understanding of this mm. uh, was St. Ignatius of Loyola, mm. who um, That's great. really articulated what it, you know, the movements of, of the spirit and how the, the good spirit works, how the evil spirit works. You know, and how to kind of find our way in that, um, and and how to let ourselves be drawn by the good spirit and not by the evil spirit. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's just a great story of him. Um, he was a soldier, Spanish, very fiery soldier, and he, uh, in one battle, suffered a cannonball wound in his leg, broke it. You know, Oof. they set it, but then after it was set and it had healed, they they had set it kind of wrong, Oops. and he was very vain. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so they, he got them to break it again. No anesthetic, you know, re wow. reset this it. This guy was tough. He's really tough. Serious. Mm. Very serious. <laughs> but <laughs> reset it. So he's laying in bed, you know, kind of healing from this sort of vanity wound. And um, the place he was staying only had two books, you know, The Life of Christ um, and The Lives of the Saints. Mm. It's like, well, I guess it's my reading, you know. It's all, he's, <laughs> all I got. But he started reading The Lives of the Saints. And he, um, so he kind of flip-flopped between reading The Lives of the Saints and then kind of daydreaming about, like, rescuing noble ladies from danger, you know? <laughs> and he began to notice, like, t the experience of his heart when he, when he was thinking about these things and then afterwards. Mm -hmm. And he noticed that when he was thinking about the noble, you know, rescuing the noble ladies from danger, it was very exciting. He was, you know, so happy. And But then after, he felt, like, dry mm -hmm. and heavy mm -hmm. and down, you know? But when he was thinking about the saints and thinking like, what if I did what St. Dominic did or what St. Francis did? And it was like, it like set a fire to his heart. He was like excited wow. and happy. But then even after he, he was reading that past, you know, past that time, he, he still had this like sense of like joy and, um, you know, fervor and um, purpose. And it was, he noticed the difference in, in those two situations. And eventually this led him to kind of write down what he was experiencing mm -hmm. and he articulated uh, basically what we call spiritual constellation versus spiritual desolation wow. and, and the discernment of spirits, which I'm sure you're Absolutely. very familiar Ignatian with. Ignatian spirituality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just, it's just something, you know, like, I mean, ba on the very basic level, like when we're moving, if we're moving towards God in our life, you know, mm -hmm. um, seeking him, trying to, you know, live according to, uh, to his love, um, 
the Lord's going to draw us with consolation, you know, with every increase of faith, hope, and love, with mm. peace, with gentleness, with, you know, all these beautiful things. Uh, but the evil spirit's going to try to kind of bite at us and yes. cause unrest in us, anxiety, um, you know, distract. distract us, you know, place all these false obstacles in our mm. way, you know, mm. to try to, you know, pull us away from the Lord. Mm. But if we're, on the contrary, if we're kind of heading away from God, so maybe really stuck in a life of serious sin or whatever, um, the evil one's going to try to seduce us with all these, you know, promises of pleasure and gratification. Mm -hmm. And the Lord, the good spirit, is going to tug at our conscience, hmm. you know, to get us to return to him. So there's these two kind of ways. But it's, it's amazing because what you're speaking about being drawn, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, who am, who am I being drawn by? Mm. What am I letting myself be drawn by? God or the evil spirit, mm -hmm. you know? And it's this battle, I think, that we're all in. Mm -hmm. It never stops till, you know, whatever, Absolutely. 15 minutes after death. But <laughs> <laughs> it's really something. Well, and that we, yeah, again, we hear, or I'm as I'm listening to you, sister, it's being aware mm -hmm. is so important. Mm -hmm. So being willing to go and into this, this frontier, Mm -hmm. of my heart, um, of my soul, um, discern, um, understand basically, who, is that about God? Is that not about God? Mm -hmm. Um, and to choose for, to move myself towards, um, the light, mm -hmm. um, the spirit of God, uh, and be blessed in that mm -hmm. choosing. Um, gosh, I think we have so this is powerful. Mm -hmm. I mean, just to even summarize, as we are thinking about our emotional lives, our our minds, our thoughts, our intellect, our wills, uh, our sense of identity, um, living from the heart, and this reality of the spiritual realm and spiritual world, mm -hmm. um, that we're body and soul, mm -hmm. you know, that we are spiritual creatures. Um, we are, this is kind of some of the main players in the symphony mm -hmm. that we want to be conducting um, towards this draw of mm -hmm. love. Mm -hmm. um, when I wonder in all of this, can we feel the difference? Um, does it make a difference? Oh, yeah. What I'm letting draw me. Yeah. And how can, I, I just want to illustrate it right who are what's the what's the setting we can paint this in you know i had an idea <laughs> <laughs> i think the lord of the rings oh is the it's best my favorite it's so good i love it sister it's so good um but yeah i don't know if you're all familiar with the lord of the rings but it's um it's just fabulous written by J.R.R. tolkien yes um just this huge epic adventure um but one character who I think really illustrates this is Gollum. Gollum. Schmeagol. Schmeagol. I, I can't do the voice. But. <laughs> no, I don't think I can either. <laughs> I, I won't try. Uh. But he was, he was kind of like a hobbit-like creature before, mm -hmm. found the ring, and was, you know, drawn to the ring and became consumed by the ring, wow. you know, which was the, the evil ring of the Lord Sauron. I don't mm -hmm. want to get into too much detail, mm -hmm. but but this ring held power. It held power. It held power, and it drew. It drew. It drew other others to it, um, and he was so consumed by it um, and obsessed with it. You know, mm -hmm. he got like my precious, my precious. You know, that it. But it, it's amazing to watch what happens. His whole life was set on it. That was the mm -hmm. one thing he was drawn to. Everything, every trajectory of his life was to have the ring and um and it was a ring of evil and what happened to him mm -hmm. it ate him from the inside out mm -hmm. he became this shriveled shadow of himself less and less less and less decreased um, and not in the sense john the baptist talks about but really in the sense of of right. diminishment diminishment mm -hmm. and um poisoned inside you know wow. um, and to me that's just such a great example of what happens when we let um anything but God draw us, actually. Yeah. Not just, you know, evil in the deepest, darkest sense, but even mm -hmm. like other distractions, other attractions, mm -hmm. whatever. If it's not the Lord and we're not letting that one love draw us, then this is what can happen to us. We're diminished. Yeah. Because we're made for love. Right. Well, in contrast, here as you're thinking, if you think about the fellowship, okay, mm -hmm. the people um, 
in the Fellowship of the Ring who were about the more, they were about the good, mm -hmm. um, seeking to, in a sense, combat this great evil. Um, so, and it's so powerful, right? You've got even, okay, Gimli the dwarf. Um, we've <laughs> got <laughs> love him to pieces. Um, Legolas the elf, Aragorn, um, uh, you know, the king that was to return, um, Frodo and Sam and, you know, Merry and Pippin, on and on and on. Um, you have this fellowship. Meanwhile, you see them in the midst even of their weaknesses, of their struggles, of their toils, choosing for the good. Mm -hmm. So many powerful moments. Um, when Frodo's down, Sam is, is standing by him in friendship, choosing the good, putting Frodo on his very own back when Frodo is, is so weak on, on the slopes of Mount Doom and, and helping him to carry his burden mm. um, towards this victory of destroying this great evil. Or even when um, Gimli, right? He's, he's not the fastest runner, um, <laughs> huffing and puffing behind Legolas and, and Aragorn, um, using his good humor uh, to, to suffer well um, <laughs> and uh, persevere through his natural weakness. Um, and Legolas and Gimli, through their own, um, you know, at first it was animosity, right. but as they fight together and as they choose for the good together, they are bonded together mm -hmm. in in a loyalty and in a friendship that mm -hmm. was never thought possible mm -hmm. at the beginning of this film. Or even Aragorn, he was a ranger, and um, this mission and choosing for it and claiming his role in it, um, he reclaimed his own sonship mm -hmm. and kingship mm -hmm. and and dignity and. Um, towards the good of all mm -hmm. of um, and really the saving all of Middle Earth. Now, if you're not a Lord of the Rings fan, this is gonna <laughs> this is this may or not be a helpful <laughs> illustration. Yeah. But as you let love draw you, mm -hmm. um, wherever you are, in whatever circumstances you are, it will ennoble you. Mm -hmm. It will actually bring power to your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. It will will bring new. Um, and and draw you into a fuller version of yourself. Mm, I love that, sister. Oof! But it takes it's it's sacrificial. Mm -hmm. um, it it takes us being willing to overcome ourselves mm -hmm. um, and live for the more, mm -hmm. which is hard. It's not an it's not always an easy yes. No, definitely not. It costs. There's a cost to it. There's a great cost. Um, but it, and it's also like I mean all of these characters, but even like you think the saints, you know, mm -hmm. it's like love drew them out of their comfort zones. You know, you think of Saint, you know, uh, Mother Cabrini, right? She sailed over the Atlantic like what was it like? I don't know. Umpteen times. Umpteen times, and she hated water. She was afraid of water. <laughs> God bless her. But it was for love that it drew her out, and she became one of the greatest American saints we have, she's, right? She's incredible. She's amazing. Absolutely incredible. She's amazing, and it's like this. And what happens? It's like that coming alive that you're talking about. Hmm. You know, the saints are the, those who are fully alive, hmm. fully themselves radiating you mm -hmm. know with that life because they let themselves be drawn you know um i mean just you can think of numerous saints every it's almost like all, every all of this, saint good point <laughs> <laughs> now that i'm thinking about it you're right but but precisely as you're speaking sister it's like they allowed god's power to be made perfect mm -hmm. in their weaknesses mm -hmm. um to draw them past their very selves, to transcend their very selves. Mm -hmm. um, this is the possibilities born of living, adhering our lives to love. Mm -hmm. um, it's worth it. It's worth it. Well, and even as I'm thinking about it, it's like, how do we strengthen ourselves in this? Uh, because there's a thousand distractions mm -hmm. and it's hard. It's mm -hmm. confusing. It's actually really hard to discern sometimes. Gosh, what does love look like here? Mm -hmm. um, what is choosing for the good look like here? Mm -hmm. um, and well, a few things come to mind, and I imagine, I, well, I hope you have thoughts for me too. I, I have some. I you have some. some. <laughs> yes. Well, I would kick us off with silence, mm -hmm. stillness, and solitude. Mm. Um, it's a triple combo that slows things down, helps us to become aware of what's going on inside, and um, Stepping back, to, solitude is not a being alone as much as it's, or lonely as much as it's 
leaning into communion with God. It's being mm-hmm. alone with God. Mm-hmm. Um, stillness is slowing ourselves down. Um, silence allows us to hear the most important voice, mm-hmm. which is that voice of love and that invitation of love, which is always there. Mm-hmm. And we can trust that. Mm-hmm. Um, that as we give ourselves room and space to tap into those three things and not like hermits, you know, like even five minutes a day can give you a whole revival of your interior compass. Mm -hmm. Um, One miracle a minute or a few sprinkled throughout your day. Mm -hmm. Um, But to strengthen us in in taking courage to letting ourselves be drawn by Mm -hmm. love. Mm -hmm. I love that, sister. It is so practical and real Mm -hmm. and um, and powerful, actually. It's powerful. I mean, I've experienced it in my own life. It's like, what? Yeah. You know, it's because you're not, it's not until you're silent and still that you can, you actually almost, it's not till then you actually realize you are being drawn. Yeah. That love actually has never stopped drawing you to himself. Isn't it something? It, it's, it's an internal draw. And it's like opening ourselves to that and letting ourselves be, be led, be drawn mm-hmm. to him, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, And just thinking about that, like just the fact that even just to ponder, like he is drawing me Mm. personally, uniquely, Mm. that he desires me to be with him. That's actually why he's drawing, right? The whole reason, like you mentioned, is because he wants me to be with him. You know, there's still a distance between, you know, but it's like he's drawing um, and we find him. I mean, it's kind of a paradox, but also within our hearts, you know, wow. drawing us to that place. And also, I think to notice too, um, I think to notice the difference too, when we're drawn by by love, by God, there's always a reverence for our freedom, kind of like we talked about before. Isn't that powerful? It's an invitation. It's a proposal, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, it's, um, it's delightful. It's like the, like we mm-hmm. were saying, the mm-hmm. fragrance of coffee or baking yes. bread. And it's something, it's like, oh. <gasps> that's what my heart longs for yeah. and it resonates within our being it's you know native. it really is mm-hmm. and there's a difference you know when we're drawn by something that's not god that's something that's evil or it, it's it's a bit jarring it feels that there's a bit of a manipulation in it mm. so just to notice i just encourage you kind of in the in the line of determinative of spirits but to notice like is this is this resonating something deeply in my mm-hmm. my being? Almost like it's almost like that memory of childhood. You know those sweet <sighs> memories of when we're little. Does it um, harmony? Is, is there like a harmony that's kind of called forth yes. by this drawing of love? So it's just a, it's kind of a more abstract point of reflection, but just a little one. No, I love it. It's kind of like I like to call my bad jazz kind of days. Yeah. <laughs> you know when, when things are getting scrambled and yeah. yeah. It's uh, and noticing where's the source of that bad jazz yeah. and uh, yeah. becoming aware of it. Yeah. Anyway, it's probably more, even more candid reduction of what <laughs> you're talking about, sister, but no, yeah. beautiful. Yeah, but and letting yourselves be, like, like you said, stillness, silence, solitude, mm-hmm. be drawn mm-hmm. to him in that. I love that. Mm. It's good stuff. Well, my goodness, I, I mean, I think, I hope we didn't cover too much ground. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> we can unpack more in other episodes. <laughs> Amen. But just, yeah, letting love yeah. draw. It sounds like an invitation to an awesome mm-hmm. adventure of becoming. Amen. Who I am. Amen. And who I have been made to be most fully. Amen. Yeah. Wow. Mercy. Well, before we go, do you have any thoughts, sister? You know, I do. I'm going to I'm going to borrow your silent solitude and stillness thought. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to challenge um everyone listening and myself but just to take um just to take time this week. You know, if you don't already each day but even just 10 minutes to sit silent still and by yourself. And um just listening to, to the Lord and what he's saying to you in that moment and how he's drawing you to himself. Mm. So just, yeah, just a kind of like little 10 minute challenge this okay. week. Silence, stillness, solitude. Mm. That's beautiful, sister. Yeah. Well, and I would go a little, I would, before I go, <laughs> I want to go lean even more into that. Mm. Um, in a sense, God seeks us uniquely. And how is he drawing you? And that's going to be different than the person next to you. And I would say, as you're taking your 10 minutes of 
silence and stillness and solitude, your being with the Lord, alone with God, to notice how he draws you in beauty. So whether that's through artwork, through creation, but naming specific things, things that touch your heart, that draw mm -hmm. you and lift you to God, um, truth and goodness and create your categories and um, notice how is God drawing you in and with his love in all the creative ways that he's doing it mm -hmm. in relationships, in people, in experiences, in events, um, in, in the, the little and big things of your life. Mm -hmm. And um, because we don't just have a God of abundance, but of superabundance. Mm -hmm. And when we start looking for it, then we can find these currents that we can hop on all the more easily to and be drawn home mm -hmm. to the heart of God. I love that, sister. That's Amen. so powerful. Amen. It's great. Well, gosh, sister, wow. do you want to close us in a prayer? I would be honored. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, so much for uh, this conversation, for this time. We ask you, Lord, we ask you to draw us, draw us to yourself. Uh, we ask you to draw all the circumstances of our life, all our relationships. We ask you to draw our thoughts, our will, our emotions, our sense of identity. You draw them all to yourself, Lord, um, that we might be in communion with you that we might know ourselves to be good, loved, and lovable. That we might know our origin and destiny, which is your love. We entrust to you all the needs and intentions of our hearts, our families, our friends. We ask for your light to be poured upon them, upon us. And we entrust all of our, our intentions as well to our Blessed Mother Mary, as we pray Hail Mary, full, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Grace, pray, pray for, for us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. God bless you all. God bless you. Joy to be with you. See you next time. God bless. This was Let Love Podcast with the Sisters of Life, a religious community of women consecrated for the protection of the sacredness of human life. Be assured of our prayers and learn more at sistersoflife.org.